Um, so today we're talking about Facebook Libra, um, which is a new cryptocurrency that Facebook's released, yep. which is going to be, it plans to launch it in 2020. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments box and we'll get back to you or just say hi. Um, Mark, tell us about it. So yeah, uh, it's called Libra with an A. Yes. It's brand new. It's so new. I've got two sets of notes I'm working from today. Okay, good. I so see I'm them. Be, I'm They're here. shuffling from computer to paper notes. Dynamic, nice. <laughs> uh, Libra is a blockchain-based cryptocurrency. Right. Um, it's a permissioned blockchain. Okay. Which we'll go into some details on later. So blockchain just means that it's uh, it's kind of a database that's distributed around the world and uh, it records uh, data. Basically, when you make a transaction, it's cryptographically tied to the entire history of all the other transactions as well. So it's unbelievably difficult to change a blockchain. Okay. So it's very, very good from an accounting point of view. It's okay. what we call immutable. Libra looks a lot like someone has looked at Bitcoin yeah. and gone, what's wrong and how do we fix it? Okay. So Bitcoin has a big scalability problem. So as I said before, it's a blockchain uh, database, which means it's distributed globally. There's, uh, you know, tens of thousands of copies of the Bitcoin blockchain in existence, and they all have to be updated every time you do a transaction. Yeah. And that means making transactions can actually take a very, very long time, and they're computationally, deliberately, very, very expensive. Mm. And that takes a lot of power, and it generates an awful lot of heat and an awful lot of CO2 as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, they haven't said how. Um, but one of the design principles of uh, Libra is that it is going to be scalable to the scale of billions of users. Yep. So that's you know where Bitcoin is struggling. They're, they're aiming to shoot through that. The next one is uh, stability. So if you've heard about cryptocurrencies, you've probably heard about them because of the giant Bitcoin price spike that yep. happened last year, where I think an individual Bitcoin, Bitcoin was selling for something like $20,000. Mm, yeah. It was a, and if you look at the chart, it's this sort of crazy cliff edge spike. Yeah. And most of that was driven by speculators. And one of Bitcoin's problems is, truthfully, people aren't using it. Yeah. I mean, it's very popular with uh, criminals charging you ransoms. Uh, it's very popular with speculators, but you aren't buying yeah. your groceries in Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and one of the reasons that you're not doing that is there's a big stability issue with it. That the, the price fluctuations on Bitcoin um, are crazy. And so it leads to things like, I think it was last year, there was a there was a cryptocurrency conference and they stopped taking payments in Bitcoin. Um, you couldn't pay for this cryptocurrency conference with the main cryptocurrency yeah. just because of the price fluctuations yeah. were so crazy. And the way that it's going to achieve stability is through uh, price being pegged to a basket of uh, fiat currencies that you've heard of and also because it's actually going to have its own reserves. So it's going to have, uh, it's going to be linked to, or the, the value is going to be linked to bank deposits and short-term government securities. Okay. So it's looking more like currencies mm. that, that we use every day. Also, yeah. Uh, and then the other design principle is around the area of smart contracts. So a smart contract is a contract written in code um, and uh, smart contracts are incredibly powerful, yep. um, but like any form of code, they're subject to bugs. And you know, the sort of poster child for smart contracts is a cryptocurrency called Ethereum, yep. which is one of the other really big ones. But uh, Ethereum's problems have been on the scale of you know, uh, smart contract frauds that stretch into the tens of millions of dollars. You know, you, bugs in smart contracts have led to some enormous um, failures in Ethereum. So. Uh, what Libra have done is they have created their own programming language for writing smart contracts. And the idea of that programming language is it's basically much harder to make mistakes mm. of the kind that lead to the sorts of currency spillages that we've seen so far. Yep. So, like I say, it's like someone's looked, as you'd expect, you know, they've kind of looked at the state of cryptocurrencies yep. as they are now and gone, how can we fix this? Yeah. Um, what sort of thing would we be using it to pay for? We don't know yet. Okay. So uh, what we do know is that there are lots and lots of people behind this and uh, Facebook are talking about it, or Libra, I suppose, is talking about itself in terms of being a platform. So it has um, all the APIs that you'd expect. They are expecting, so Facebook is expecting to build services, lovely generic word, yeah. on top of this. 
um, but they're expecting other people to build yeah. services on top of this as yeah. well. And that's what will make it grow. So, so they're saying 27 corporate partners, including... We'll get into that in a second. So I just wanted to read you some quotes. I was going to read them at the beginning. Okay. I'm going to read you some quotes. Uh, can I'm... we just say, uh, is, this, is the buffering okay? Because we're having some technical deep problems. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay, so apologies yeah. if there's any buffering. Um, that's not Facebook. Uh, Maybe it is. Video. Is it? <laughs> uh, so I've, I've you read your quotes. quotes. Okay. So uh, the PR machine is touting this as a simple global currency and financial infrastructure that empowers billions of people. Yeah. I mean, it's PR, it's PRBS, but it's it shows you their ambition. Their yeah. ambition is that this scales up to billions of people. It's a new opportunity for responsible financial services innovation. So this is uh, the big thing in finance now is fintech, which is this sort of marrying of uh, internet and technology with uh, traditional banking. And it's all about platforms and services like this. And, uh, you know, they'll be expecting people to build payment systems on top of chat clients and mm -hmm. all sorts of things like that, I would expect. And the other thing that I've heard a lot this morning, uh, actually, in the news in the UK is this idea of moving money should be as easy as sending a text. Yeah. And I think that sort of shows you where this is going. The, the, the attraction of cryptocurrencies is that they're this sort of frictionless global yeah. thing. Uh, and that's very interesting because that could um, that could be very exciting. You know, the idea of frictionless uh, uh, currencies without any kind of uh, geographical borders mm -hmm. or, um, uh, you know, you don't have to pay to get your currency changed yeah. from one type of currency into another and that kind of thing. Um, but also that threatens a whole bunch of people and yeah. lots of vested interests. So it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah. So I think before you were asking about the, the backers, weren't you? Well, you said, yeah, you said there were a few people. So it's 27 corporate partners, including Spotify, eBay, MasterCard and PayPal to develop the technology. So it's yeah, big so players. There's, there's lots and lots of companies you've heard of and they've all staked uh, $10 million okay. to be founder members in this uh, association. Yep. And it's the association that's going to run Libra. So it's not Facebook's cryptocurrency. Facebook have, clearly it's their idea. They've driven this. It looks like they've provided most of the development yeah. impetus, but they are very keen for everybody to know that this is a team effort mm -hmm. and it's going to be run by an association. So another quote for you. Uh, as one member among many, Facebook's role in governance of the association will be equal to that of its peers. Yeah. So there's a lot of um, very dry detail yeah. in the documentation about, okay, it's going to be run by an association and the association has obligations in terms of providing um, nodes for the blockchain and also they have voting rights. Yeah. And so I think $10 million buys you one vote and you can buy more $10 million chunks, yeah. um, but there's a cap to how many you can get. Yeah. The the way that they talk about the association is that they want it eventually to scale up to 100 members and they want it to be a diverse association. Yep. So it's not just social media and tech companies. Yeah. There are going to be uh, academic institutions um, and, and other, other types of company in there. If you look at the list at the moment, I would suggest it's still there's a bunch of venture capitalists in there yep. and a bunch of massive technology companies you've heard of. Yep. Um, and I think that's one of the areas where... We'll look at that in a second. Um, it's, a, it's a big move for Facebook. Like some of them, MasterCard, PayPal, it's, we're talking money already, but Facebook, it's a, it's a diversion. It's enormous. It's an enormous move for them, but I think enormous moves are what Facebook have got left. Yeah. So uh, I was reading something this morning, I thought it was very intelligent analysis of this, that was basically saying, look, there's a, there's a cap of 7 billion people. Mm. So there's only 7 billion possible Facebook yep. uh, members, and yeah. they're, they're up to what, two? Two billion, mm. um, and obviously the rate at which they can add new people is going to slow because um, there's a reason that the rest of those people haven't signed up already. Yeah, and so uh, Facebook needs to make big moves, and also Facebook as a platform is changing, and you know people are moving over to Insta to, to Facebook Messenger and yeah. Instagram and things like that. So um, this is interesting for me because I spent some time working in the uh, banking sector mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, and I know how worried they are about the big technology companies yeah and they've been waiting for a while they've been expecting apple and google and facebook to make a move mm. in this yeah. space uh, and this is it this is this is kind of firing the starting gun yeah now there's nothing stopping the banks building services on top of this yeah but that's banks building services on top of yeah facebook's finance platform mm -hmm. so 
um, could get interesting. Can we ever trust Facebook as a bank that protects user privacy? I mean, we've had these privacy privacy issues with Facebook before. Can we? Do we really want to trust them with our currency? Well, I, I think there's a few interesting things here. So my initial reaction to that is actually it doesn't really matter whether or not you trust Facebook. Yep. Because, uh, again, from the work that I was doing a few years ago uh, with banks, enough people trust Facebook yeah. and other technology companies that they will use this. Yeah. And so you may end up feeling that you don't trust Facebook, but you might end up not having a choice. Mm. You know, one of the backers here is MasterCard. Yeah. Um, if this becomes a de facto currency, then you've got a big decision to make yeah. in terms of whether or not you're prepared to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I trust that the payment will be managed securely, yeah. but what's it linked to? Yeah, yeah. Do I need a Facebook profile in yeah. order to be able to use this? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing in there so far that says you do need that. Okay. But What's in it for Facebook? Yep. So Jan is saying, I will never trust them with any financial information, not even my PayPal account. So it's divisive, or is it? I think, I think that's, that's the really big question with this. Yeah. That's why this is interesting, isn't it? Is Facebook have given us so many reasons not to trust them with our privacy. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, in the early years, they were quite happy to rewrite their privacy rules without telling anybody and they would switch everything on by default. They'd just kind of inform their users one yeah. day, oh, by all those things you switched off, we've just switched them all on for you. If you don't want them to be switched on, you go back and switch them all off again. Yeah. And by the way, they're in a different place and they use different words than they used to, so you have to go and figure out what they mean. Yeah. Uh, and then more recently, we've seen things like Cambridge Analytica mm. and sort of uh, mess ups around um, password storage yeah. and things like this. So I completely understand. I mean, I don't have a Facebook account, that's how much I trust Facebook. Um, Yep. But uh, I think if you look at the way that this has been set up, in particular the way that they have uh, created that association, it, this looks like Facebook are trying really, really hard to sort of wash their hands yeah. or wash their brand out of the cryptocurrency. They, they want you to know this is not us. This is going mm. to be 100 different members. Yeah. Um, so it's not a... It's not going to be a Facebook-operated mm. cryptocurrency, or at least that is the way... That's how they're expressing That's, their yeah. attention at the moment. So what about security? Do you think, is it going to be an attractive target for hackers? It will definitely be an attractive target for hackers. Um, what we can say about security is, I just wanted to go into a little bit actually on the design of the, just one of the aspects of the design, which goes into this slightly, which is, this is, um, uh, Bitcoin is a permissionless blockchain, yeah. which means if you want to create a Bitcoin node yeah. and run a complete copy of the blockchain and be part of the process of validating transactions, you can be. Yeah. Okay. And so in, in order to take over, uh, in order to start rewriting the blockchain, you need to control 51% of it. Yeah. So if you have a majority of all the, uh, so for Bitcoin now, that would be maybe 5,000 nodes. If yeah. you can control 5,000 nodes, you can control Bitcoin, you can start rewriting yeah. history and saying that, well, that person didn't pay that person. Yeah. Start paying yourself instead. This is not going to be a permissionless blockchain. This is going to be a permissioned blockchain, yeah. which means that only certain people have got permission to run one of those yeah. nodes, and those people are the association members. Yeah. So the association members, the companies that you've mentioned, they are going to become big targets. Yeah. So there's a smaller number of nodes that you need to compromise in order to compromise this, uh, in order to compromise Libra. Yeah. But they are going to be entities that know that they're targets, and presumably they're going to take that security very, very seriously yeah. indeed. And I think my concern with cryptocurrencies has never been the actual currencies themselves, certainly not Bitcoin. I think the cryptography behind the blockchain is, is bomb proof. You're not going to find a hole in the you know, You're not going to break the cryptography. Yeah. The Achilles heel has actually been in the exchanges. Yeah. So in order to um, make payments with Bitcoin, you have a, a private key, which is essentially a long password. Yeah. And um, that, that's what... That's how you grant permission for money to be moved. Yeah. And in order to do that conveniently, lots of people entrust that private key to an exchange, which is essentially just a website. Yeah. And at that point, you are leaving behind the safety and security of the cryptography of the blockchain. Yeah. Because you're just giving your password to someone else and going, would you mind looking after that for yeah. me? And so the safety of your cryptocurrency is not in the hands of the skills of Satoshi, yeah. and his ability to design 
cryptographic uh, cryptocurrencies is now in the hands of someone's ability to set up and run a secure web server. Yeah. So right back to earth. Yeah. With sort of normal day-to-day -day security concerns, and that is where cryptocurrencies get stolen. Yeah. From websites. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a matter of basic website security. So my guess with this would be probably those permissioned nodes will be quite secure. Yeah. My guess would be that the cryptocurrency itself will be absolutely bomb-proof, and my guess is that there will be massive thefts and frauds yeah. from exchanges that are yeah. doing uh, Libra yeah. um, transactions. Yeah. Just because there's nothing in this that says that isn't going to happen, yeah. and that's the reality of cryptocurrencies at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, someone's Ruel has asked, is Libra going to be owned by Facebook or just co-founder? Mm. It is not going to be. So Facebook have spun up a separate company, yeah. Um, I think called Co Libra or something like that. It's going to be run by the association. So it's going to be run by a hundred separate companies. Yeah. They're going to manage the reserve and they're going to manage the direction the cryptocurrency takes. Yeah. So Facebook is going to be a relatively small player in this big team. Yeah. My concern about that big team is Facebook saying that this is going to be a diverse yeah. team. At the moment it looks a lot like a section of Silicon Valley. Yeah. You know, it's got it's got Lyft, it's got Uber, it's got Facebook, it's yeah. got uh, and a bunch of venture capitalists. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't look that diverse right now. Yeah, yeah. So we should bear in mind that we're on Facebook Live while we're talking about Facebook. Yep. Users, presumably the people watching this, trust Facebook to some extent, you would hope, if they're on Facebook. So what, so, it, I mean, what's your advice for them? Just, as always, be cautious with whatever you share. I mean, well, or whatever at, you decide moment, to use. At the moment, uh, Libra doesn't exist yet. Yeah. It's going to exist. It's coming out in 2020. Um, with the backing that it's got, I, it's, I imagine people will be using it. My advice at the moment would be, okay, we're not. What we're talking about now is a cryptocurrency, and I would say uh, if this operates in the same way that Bitcoin does, where you get a private key, the security of your money then rests with the security of that private key. And the best way to keep that secure is to write it down, put it on a piece of paper, stick it in your pocket. Yeah. Um, or put it on an encrypted drive yeah. on your computer and the least secure way of looking after that private key is to give it to someone else and go, I hope you uh, yeah. don't lose that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Royal saying, so can it be controlled by those big companies? Yeah, no, the, those big yeah, companies control it. So yeah. it's, uh, they will control the reserve uh, and they will control the direction of the development and, yeah. and how it's operated. So a major I don't know what, how the voting works, but some majority of those companies will control yeah. what happens with Libra. And you have to imagine who's going to get involved in this, who's going to make a stake in this. Well, it's going to be people that think they can get something from it. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out because at the moment where you have a currency backed by a reserve, that's normally at the whim of central bankers or politicians. Yeah. And this is going to be a currency with a reserve backed by a consortium of companies. Yeah. And I haven't yet decided whether or not I think that's a, a better thing or a worse thing. Yeah. But none of those are particularly groups of people that I feel um, hugely uh, enamoured with. Yeah. But I guess what you could say about central banks is at least they've got a track record. Yeah. At least there's a yeah. degree of predictability about how people are going to behave around that. So it remains to be seen. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I guess, you know, slightly worried, but I'm always slightly worried about the stuff that Facebook does. And just anything on the internet. And anything on the internet. <laughs> Get your tinfoil hat. Yeah. <laughs> What's your tinfoil hat? Um, so David Bradley has said, so when Facebook throws you in Facebook jail, you lose access to your money and can't spend it. Possibly. It remains to be seen. Okay. Um, so uh, thanks for the questions. Keep them coming. We can always reply in the uh, comments section. So, uh, and thanks, Mark. Pleasure.